So we've talked about uh, version controlling our project so far and we've talked about um, bootstrapping it with a CSS framework like Bootstrap. So in this video what we're going to talk about is um, how to do some uh, configuration within Laravel and we're also going to um, start integrating the theme into um, our Laravel project and I'll show you how you can go about that. Um, so let's hop over to the uh, code right here and um, actually just before we talk about the code um, one thing I want to mention is the template what I will do is um, I will create another vhost um, just for the template itself and I'll end it with tmp to remind myself that it's a template so here I have smartadmin.tmp and if I go over here um, you'll see smartadmin.tmp right here so if I ever want to view the theme or sort of browse through it and see what kind of elements can I use and I don't have an internet connection um, I can just view it all right here because um, it's on my own computer. Okay, so let's go over to Laravel now. And what I'm not going to talk about in this video is just how to install Laravel, how to get a basic Laravel site up and running. I have another video on that. Um, so if you want to see just how to install Laravel, um, get a basic Laravel site running, uh, go check out that video or just look in Laravel's uh, quick start guide. Um, but basically, I've created a Laravel project here and I've uh, started off with some code um, so you don't have to watch me type everything so the probably the first place that you want to start out is your routes file and I've just uh, created some basic routes here um, basically what this site is about is it's a lead generation website so um, freight forwarders can go here and they can uh, find out some leads and also people in the shipping industry they can find a freight forwarder to help them with their shipment so that's the purpose of this site and I've just created some uh, basic routes here to get me started. There's different ways you can go about setting up routes for your project. Um, you can use RESTful controllers here. So here I just have route uh, colon colon controller. And you specify that the route that you want the application to respond to and then the controller. You'll notice we don't have to put the method here. Um, that's going to be defined within the controller um, uh, using RESTful methods. And the same thing with this register right here. And I also have a resourceful route right here. And this is going to be one of the leads pages. So when somebody types uh, freightform.com slash FCL, they're going to get sent to the lead controller. And I'll show you more about rest, uh, sorry, resourceful controllers later on. The reason why I have this print app environment at the top here and also this user find one is for two reasons. Um, let's just make this text a bit bigger so this is... Uh, this is easier to see. Okay, that's better. Um, with the app environment, what we can see here is what um, environment Laravel it thinks it's in right now. So um, if we go over to the site right here and we just refresh, you'll see that it says local right here. Okay, and the way we can, the way you can basically tell Laravel um, whether it's currently on the local server or whether it's on the production server. Um, is inside uh, the bootstrap folder I believe so let's go over there now my projects right here um, FF new and then we will uh, let's close up this app folder and then in the inner bootstrap we have the start.php folder and you'll see right here um, in the beginning there's nothing right here um, it's an empty array and what you can do is you can paste the host name of one of your local development computers into this array so I'm going to paste that right back in there. And one question you might be asking is, where does this host name come from? Well, you can find out your host name really easily um, by going into your command line. Let's just clear everything here. And I'm going to type host name, and you will get back the host name. So what you'll do is you'll just copy that, and you can paste it in here. And you'll notice this is an array. So if you have other development computers, um, you can just uh, append to that array all of your local development computer. So you'll notice um, at the top here it says local. So if I just change this, for example, I add a few dots to something which is not my host name, and we go back here and we refresh. Uh, oops. Okay, so now we're getting the database error, and I'm actually just going to comment this out for now because I don't want to get to that point um, just yet. So let's, let's just comment that out for now. And we'll go back to our home page right here and you'll see that it says production in the top left right now. So any sort of value that's in there or no value at all, which is not um, your local computer, 
what it's going to do is it's going to think it's production. Okay, so you must put your local computer here um, so that Laravel knows its uh, its environment is local. Okay, so why is this useful? The reason why this is useful is um, for a lot of reasons. For example, uh, to connect your database on your production server, it could be different than the way you do on your local computer. Um, you know, you might have a different username on your production server. You might have a different password. Okay, you might have something simple like root root on your local computer, which is what I have here. But on my production server, I'm not going to use um, such an easy to guess password. It's going to be something um, a lot more difficult. So you can specify your local environments in here by pasting the host name in there. And that brings us over to um, the, the database right here. So um, this here, user find one. Okay, so if we go over, uh, if we open our app folder back up again, we'll see this config folder. And by default, there is no, this local folder I've created right here, that's not there by default. We just have um, a bunch of files here for one environment, which is production. So what you need to do is um, go inside your config folder and you'll create a new folder. You can call it local, okay, or you can call it development. In my case, I called it local. And then inside local, what you want to do is you basically, what you could do is, for example, this database, like if you have different credentials on your database, you could copy all of this code and you can create your local folder, create your database.php, which has the same name, and then you could paste it all in here, and then you could update its values, and when it's local, we are going to use these credentials right here. We're not going to use the ones um, in the config folder. Okay, so that's the point of it. Um, but you'll notice I haven't, I have, I don't have everything here. The only parts I need to do is the parts I want to change. So in this uh, default de database.php, we can see what this whole file is doing here is it's just returning an array. And inside the array, there is a key called connections. And connections is set to an array, and that has various other arrays in it. The one we're interested in is the MySQL array, okay? So what you want to do is you don't want to bother with all the rest of this stuff. All you want to do is you want to override this MySQL array right here with your own, which is in database.php. So you'll notice what I've done is I've just mimicked this one. I return an array, and then we have nested inside that connections array, and nested inside that is the um, MySQL array. So I have the same sort of thing going on here. Returning an array, nested inside is the connections array, and nested inside is the MySQL array. So I just have this one right now, and what we're going to do is we're going to override here with the local values. And just to give you a sense of um, what's going on under the hood, and I don't know if Laravel does this exactly, but basically the, the concept is the same as the array merge function in PHP. Okay, So if you want to understand what's going on here, you can go down to the examples for array merge, and you'll see that in this array one right here, we have color is set to red. Okay, and in array two, we also have this color key, but its value is green. Okay, so what's going to happen here is when we use array merge and we pass it array one, array two, array two's values are going to override array one's. So if it finds the same one, color, color, if there's a conflict like this, the last one is going to override it. So you can think. If you have your local environment set um, in Laravel, local is going to be this array too. And what you have in your local folder is going to override the other one. Okay, So you can think of it like that. So let's go back to the code and just um, prove to you that this is working. Okay, So um, let's uh, we've, we've done all our settings right there. And let's go over um, to this one right here and let's refresh. And you'll see we have local here, and we got no error. Okay, so let's go back to routes, and you'll see we are calling the database right here. So if it was not able to connect to the database, um, we would have an error from doing this right here. Okay, so just to prove that to you, um, let's go back over to um, start.php, and we're just going to make this wrong. We're going to put underscore wrong right here. Okay, so once I do this, it's not. This is not going to be my own computer. And Laravel is going to go back to a production, uh, to a production environment. So if I refresh here, we're going to get an uh, we're going to get an error. And the reason is because it couldn't connect to the database. 
the reason why I couldn't connect to the database is because it is using the production. It's in the production mode right now. And because it's in production mode, it's not going into this local folder. It's using the default database.php. And inside this database.php, we have ff wrong right here. Okay, if I fix that right here and I set that to the correct value, <clears throat> and we come back here and we refresh, we'll see that it connects fine right now and it's production. Okay, so that is, um, that's basically how um, the environments work in Laravel. And you can override any of the um, you can override any of the config values inside that uh, database file. Okay, um, this video is getting a bit long now, so I'm just going to stop it right here, and we can talk about templates in the next video.